waiting. Okay. We got it. Yep. We are recording now. Yep. And that, I know that's a, having been on other boards, that's a state of Connecticut law that you have to announce that you're recording a meeting. So we are recording the meeting. Um, I don't know where Dawn went. I think she lost connectivity. Um, but Andrew, now that Beth has introduced you and after all this uh, faldy roll here, if you could uh, like start and- uh, I will, You want me just to give my little, uh, I'll give an yeah. introduction and then yeah. we'll go from there. All right, well, thank yeah. you everybody for having me tonight. I uh, very much appreciate the opportunity to address you folks this evening. Um, I'll just give a little bit of background about myself and then kind of where we are and where I hope to be going. And then we could open it up for a dialogue. Any questions that anybody has specific to economic development in the community or any questions in general, I'd be happy to address from there. So as Beth said, my name is Andrew Martelli. I'm the coordinator of economic development and grant writing for the town of Cheshire. I'm replacing Jerry Sitko, who retired after 30 years serving the Cheshire community. Um, Jerry retired back in June. My first day in the office was August 9th. Some of you may or may not know me. I'm also on the Board of Education in Cheshire. I um, started, I'll be, it'll be two years in December. They're four year overlapping terms. So I have two more years on the Board of Education. Um, I kind of took part of the lead with uh, some other folks here in town on the school modernization effort over the past 20 or so months um, during my board service there. So um, a little bit about this position. So Jerry had served the town. I'm the town's third economic development director. I have files going all the way back to the 1960s when the focus was really on industrial development, um, particularly in the north end of town, which saw the creation of our um, interchange zone in the late 1980s, as well as the Cheshire Industrial Parks. Um, I'm kind of a self-proclaimed Cheshire nerd. I grew up here in town. I graduated Cheshire High School class of 2000. Started reading the Cheshire Herald uh, when I was about six or seven years old and followed the growth of Cheshire from the time I was born, you know, so throughout the 1980s into the 1990s. I actually wrote a letter to the editor of the Cheshire Herald in 2000 entitled A Community at a Crossroads, and they were going to build a Lowe's Home Improvement Center um, at the four corners across from Dietrich's Home Center. And what I thought the effects would that would have been on the community at that time. Um, so I've always wanted this job. This is kind of a dream job for me. Um, I do have to say my first day, they moved this position out of the planning department and they moved it into the town manager's office. So my first day in the office, Arnett Talbot, the assistant town manager and Sean Kimball, the town manager kind of gave me like, you know, don't get freaked out when you go in there. But I literally opened up an office door and there was just like boxes and files going all the way back to the Apple Valley Mall and the interchange zone and the shops of Cheshire and other things that you might know if you've been following the growth of Cheshire over the past 30 some odd years. Um, so coming into the job, I do have to say, I kind of had a little bit of a leg up because I knew what all this was. And so I started filing and started trying to figure out exactly um, where we are and where we want to be as a community. Um, my first week on the job, we received our first development application for the North End uh, Interchange Zone, which is the Tax Increment Financing District, which is a special um, area that was adopted back in 2018 by Act of the Town Council to try to get some infrastructure improvements to the North End to help spur some economic development growth, which will be coming shortly to the community. Um, one of the things that the economic development coordinator does is that we're the staff liaison for three commissions in town, one of which is the economic development commission, town beautification, and then the historic district, which covers the town center and then also out in the Brooksvale area. Um, so I like to say that you know, economic development isn't just about business growth or retention um, or attraction of new industry to move into town, but it's also a huge quality of life issue. Um, and, you know, when I'm out selling the community or we're talking about Cheshire, one of our greatest attributes is the high quality of life that Cheshire enjoys. And the library definitely plays a huge role into that. Um, and also with the library, you know, it's I was thinking about it this morning before, you know, I was kind of figuring out exactly what I was going to talk about today. And, you know, the access of information and the technology and the curation of the building itself and the, and the catalogs and whatnot that are in that building are all, you know, geared towards if somebody's coming in to look for a specific, they're looking to start a new job or they're looking for resume help or whatever in order to, you know, grow themselves personally, the library plays a huge role in that. 
Um, and then there's also like the spinoff benefits of the library being in the town center and folks who are visiting the library and then the spinoff effects for local restaurants and shops and whatnot. Um, you know, moving forward, Beth and I have, we spent some time talking once programming is able to start. I mean, I know we, we had a program which I attended last, I believe it was last week or two weeks ago, which was the first uh, event in the Mary Baldwin room, which was on light pollution, which was a really great and very well attended um, event, which I learned some things, which I pass off to the planning department in town. Um, you know, we really want to bring some programming to the library um, to attract some, you know, different discussions about economic development, business growth, business retention, and also quality of life, and have some speakers come in. Um, I do have a budget for all of my different commissions, and so there is uh, ability to have some speakers come and utilize that space. Um, I do see the, the library as a major community center. And so I appreciate everything that you folks do and Beth does and you know the leadership over there at the at the library. So with that, if there's any specific questions, I know I kind of rambled on um, a little bit, but I'm, I'm happy to, to answer or maybe else is anything you'd like to add. Any plans for uh, development, uh, additional economic development opportunities around the downtown area? I know it's full of buildings and and things now, but um, I I wonder if it's a uh, it's very motley zoning in a lot of ways. Um, I'm a I'm a former planning and zoning commissioner in the town. Okay. It, and that was way back. I mean, it was like in the '90s, and and they were talking about getting everything organized. Uh, at our last meeting, we talked about how you know there's a parking lot behind the library, then there's the parking lot for Jesuit Restaurant, then there's the church, then there's Maplecroft. Then there's Rite Aid. Is there any particular plans going on around there? So yes, there's been definitely some discussions between the you know privately owned Cheshire Pizza and as well as the church. Um, I do know in the last capital budget that there will be um, new striping and new paving of both the library parking lot as well as the church to increase capacity there. And so we can continue to enjoy that successful relationship of when there's spillover needs for the library that there is parking availability guaranteed at the church. Um, did stop short of integrating the Cheshire Pizza lot into the library and into the church, not to say that um, that couldn't be done in the future. I have seen plans where there is connections there and then also down to Maplecroft uh, for additional parking behind the, like the block where Consignment Originals is also. But in the center of town, I do like to consider, you know, I know West Main Street's a little bit further out where the ball and socket project is. But there's significant development um, interest and work that's going on there. Um, we just submitted on behalf of the town a $925,000 grant for um, continued brownfield remediation cleanup at the Ball and Socket project. Um, they were just awarded a $1.5 million grant through the office, uh, through OPM, through the state of Connecticut. So that will see phase one building two, which is the barn building, we call it in the corner of Willow and West Main Street converted and opened in the spring of 2022. So that'll be huge. That'll be our first proof of concept on that property. I keep saying we, and I need to, I'm trying to, I have all these hats that I've kind of, have had over the years. And I was on the board of Ball and Socket Arts for six years before I took this job with the town. So I keep saying we, but Ball and Socket's one thing, the town is another thing. Um, but Ball and Socket is moving forward to have that first phase open in the spring of 20, 2022. And wow. hopefully that the uh, Brownfield grant for the next phase gets awarded and that will focus on buildings one, which is the old brick building um, to get the, to finish the environmental remediation within there and to replace the uh, corrugated metal roofs, then that building could start being able to host tenants. So there's, there's a lot there. And with the trail, we just did another grant for some signalization improvements at the Hawk system and some uh, safety enhancements there, which we submitted to the state that we're hopeful that we get. Uh, we'll know that by January of 2022 as well. Okay, thank you. Thanks for the update. Right. Harold, I have a question or may I may I interrupt and ask a question? Oh, go right ahead. Okay, um, Andrew, one of the things that we as the council are constantly answering questions about, and as you are developing um, new economic possibilities for several of the areas in town which are along Route 10. And people ask about Route 10. <clears throat> Perhaps this is an opportunity to make public aware, if they are not already, that 
any any changes in any zoning or any other building along Route 10 um, are, are dependent on the, the coordination with the state of Connecticut because Cheshire does not have the ability to govern how Route 10 is rooted or, or has uh, traffic lights or has uh, uh, curb okay. cuts, what all of that. So uh, perhaps it would be helpful for the public to know that as you are developing your plans and as the council develops plans, some of the restrictions that we have against sometimes what we think are very logical solutions, uh, which can't happen unless we get help from the state. Make sense? Yes, absolutely. And that's, you know, and that all goes back to messaging. And, you know, and just to kind of piggyback off what, what Sylvia is saying, you know, I'm getting a lot of calls about the Starbucks on Route 10 and, you know, the queuing of the traffic and whatnot. Um, you know, that's, the state governs the timing of the lights on Route 10, the state governs the curb cuts, the state governs alignment of intersections and any of those changes within, unfortunately, it does not default to the local planning. It does go to the state. Um, so that's, you know, that's both Route 10 and on Route 70. The town could definitely weigh in when going through the process of approval, but the state actually, the box kind of stops with the state. Kind of case in point out in the North End, um, the new potential development across from 691, the off ramp there, it has taken 18 months to just get approval for an, a light to be added. Whereas if you were to pull out of the new development to create a four way intersection there, it's 18 months just in this iteration. Whereas when WS development was proposed in the shops at Cheshire, it took them 22 months to get a, a go ahead from the state of Connecticut because you change the signalization of one light, it affects the entire run along Route 10. So there's a lot that goes into these these projects and development. I know I like to see I like to see things happen fast. It's um it's just a constant battle. But but it, but it, I mean it's it's worth it and you know keeping your thumb on it and pushing and um keeping things moving is is important. I think to that point too and, and Andrew and I have talked a little bit about this um along with any other public information and messaging that you're doing as these projects progress particularly the one up by 691 to have, if you have maps, if you have schematics, if you have information or pamphlets to have those at the library um, along with wherever else you have them because it's a place where we get a lot of traffic. So, um, I mean, we were one of the, we were the, the place in town when, when we were, they were doing the sunflower project that we got rid of like 500 packets of seeds, um, you know, and next year they're just gonna have them at the library because that's where they, they went, that's where people saw them. So I think, you know, um, just keeping in mind that we are a place where people do come for, to, we're trusted to give them the right information. And so I think that's a good, good place uh, to have any of that kind of information. I think that's a really good suggestion. We, we, oh, did, the, lost, Andrew. <laughs> we did the new library edition years ago. We had a whole model in the center of the library on, on what, the, uh, what the new library would look like and some of the things around it. Um, and I thought it was very helpful, helpful for people to come and see exactly what they were voting for in the referendum. Beth, to that end, um, how can you be, because that again, is it, it, it works into Andrew's um, project development as well as the coordination with the council. We continually get comments from the public that we are not consistent in how we present information sometimes to people and sometimes they feel like they have no source and we continue to ask them we try everything uh, social media and so on and so forth how can we best integrate the library into those situations where for instance as Bartland Park is being developed you at the library were gracious to host some pre-planning meetings there, which were very well attended. Is there a way for us to have a consistent presence at the library when there are projects like Bartlam Park or like the school modernization where we need a central location from which to disperse accurate factual information? So Absolutely. Um, whether it's in the form of a, a meeting and a folk, whether it's a focus group, whether it's an informational session, um, you know, once we get past our COVID uh, protocols and we can go back to, you know, we can host about 100 people in the Mary Baldwin room, um, you know, we, but at the same time, we can also do displays, um, you know, we can have 
uh, a pamphlet file. We can you know, have uh, posters up. It's really good for my librarians to know what the, the messages are. We get a lot of calls when people see things on social media. Do we know, you know what that's about? Do we have the map of what Bartlett Park South is gonna look like? If it's mentioned in the paper that there's going to be documentation on anything, a lot of times we'll get a call. So making sure we have that documentation um, that we can provide free copies to everyone who comes in who wants to take one, um, I think is really good. Uh, people really respond well to big posters that clearly outline infographics that clearly outline, you know, um, easily and concisely what a project's about, um, FAQs, you know, and we also have our website and our own social media that we could utilize uh, to, to get that information out. Um, we're about, as Ginger was saying, you know, we're about providing that correct information and good information. So um, we're happy to, to be that source for people, whether it's for the, for the town council and, or the schools or the Economic Development Commission. Um, just reach out to me and we'll see what works best. We're gonna to get to be good friends then for the next Oh yeah. <laughs> and Andrew, have you developed a packet or is it in your plan to develop some sort of a marketing? Yes. A piece of literature or a packet that promotes all the good things about Cheshire? Yes, absolutely. So um, it's funny you should say. Um, I'm actually, I've been working with, we have a new town website, um, Sylvia, which I'm sure you're well aware of. I've been working with, I. I'm limited in what I can do in changing the actual economic development tab on the town website. Um, however, I do have some subscription budgets that have been used, being used for other things that I'm reprogramming into um, revamping to have, I wanna have a specific link on our town website just for economic development. If, if any of you are ever um, have some free time, if you go onto the town of Farmington's website, and they have a direct link to um, an economic development tab there, which is basically, it brings you to a whole different website. Um, I can't announce yet, but there is a new digital marketing company that's gonna be moving to Cheshire. I can't tell you where or when or who, um, but you will know in December. Um, and they have actually offered some of their services um, to help with that initiative. I wanna do some drone footage highlighting the community, um, showing not only some of the prettier parts of town, but also some of our impressive industrial buildings out on Notter Drive. Um, and I've come up with, uh, I guess I'll announce it here, but I've come up with this campaign that I wanna start and I wanna call it Grow Cheshire. Um, not just grow as in like grow the size of the town, but grow as in um, things that are grown here, like from the farm standpoint. And then I wanna turn that into um, a, whole, a whole bunch of different ads, like sh highlighting, you know, the, the athletic events, the community events, um, things happening on the green, the fall festival and just show. And then I wanna do Cheshire grown and the grown as in like people that have come from here, bands that have started here, businesses that have started here, things that are produced here um, and just kind of populate this whole marketing campaign to show because there's a lot that the community has to offer and people don't like to just read and read and read. So I wanna do, um, you know, like, Highlight like the other day I was at the football game and you know we have like one of the best student sections in the state of Connecticut and all the kids are yelling and screaming and you know waving their things and like I want to like do like a quick snapshot of that and like you know people who want to like locate their business here or raise their family here we have a lot to show for that like that hometown type vibe and so I really want to kind of exploit that and market that and show that because you know we don't have the beach we don't have the mountains we don't have you know all of those things that people look for but what we do have is we have a really great quality of life. Um, when I was running for Board of Education, if you go back and you listen to the podcast, which I'm sure you won't, but take my word for it, um, when, when asked what people thought was the best attribute of Cheshire, every single candidate answered the quality of life and sense of community, every single one of them. So I think that that's really our, our big drive. And, you know, and Jerry kind of created this position, you know, so to speak, and I want to take it and I want to build off of it. But it wasn't by accident that, you know, like the historic district, which helps to protect our assets in the center of town, town beautification, because Cheshire wants to look nice. All of those things help to show people what type of community we are and really help with the economic development. So that's the long answer to your question, Sylvia. Yes, I do have a plan in place. Just trying to, you know, pull that money out of that town council budget in order to make it happen. Tongue in cheek. 
Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Andrew. Anybody <laughs> else have a question or a comment? Terry, if you're speaking, you're muted. I do have a question about the industrial park. Uh, we go, we drive through there quite a bit. And, you know, it, it's kind of a junky looking in a lot of ways. I mean, they leave a lot of trash around all the time. I lived in North Carolina for seven years. And if you were to go through one of their industrial parks, everything would be neat and cleaned up all the time. I assume all those businesses pay into some sort of thing to keep the place in better shape than it is. And I think that would, you know, encourage more businesses to come in there too, if it looked a little bit better. Hey, Terry, are you talking about like the Nodder Drive yeah. area or schoolhouse yeah. in the Nodder Drive area? And, you know, it's, it's funny that you mentioned that because I haven't gotten to the bottom. I've only been here since August, but um, that park was managed by FIP for years. And there was an association that was paid into for the maintenance of it. Sylvia, you might know better than I do, but it appears to me the FIP signs have been removed from the industrial park. And now it says Cheshire uh, Technology Park. And I don't know if they still do pay into um, kind of like a landscaping type of account in order for the maintenance of the park, but that's definitely something that I could look into um, when I'm meeting with the different business owners out there. I don't know, Andrew, I can't answer that, but it was started and maintained by FIP for many years. Yeah, uh, yeah I know they used to. Uh, in fact, the sign that was at the beginning there kind of deteriorated, so I assume they were gone. I assume so, but I don't know either. We'll find yeah. out. Yeah, okay, I will find out. Okay. It's a good point. Okay, anybody else have any questions or comments? Oh, Jody? I do have a question. Yeah, Andrew, um, you have a lot on your plate. <laughs> I can see that you're a very busy person. Um, when do you find time to do any grant writing? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I. I have a uh, great management specialist at the town hired, um, which is working in the town manager's office, who has been a huge asset, who did help me put together the last Brownfield grant that we did submit last week. Um, so it's, I'm working on it. You know, it's, it's, it, I've, been, I've been able to do it. The next one that's coming up is the Connecticut Communities Challenge grant, which is huge, which is due at the end of January. Um, so I'm gonna be putting a lot of time and effort into that. But, Manage my days. I, I'm, I'm very, very busy, I do have to say, yes. I appreciate you realizing that. Yeah. Well, um, what's, the, um, what's, your, um, what's your success rate with grants? Have you, uh, Cheshire, pretty lucky in those terms? Well, I've only submitted, uh, since I started here, I've only submitted two. So okay. I haven't heard back from either one of those yet. Okay, just curious, so good I, luck. I, Thank you. I will, I will know in the next few weeks. I mean, I did grant writing for the city of Waterbury for years. And then in my last, um, I worked for NeighborWorks New Horizons, which is an affordable housing developer. And so we were going after, those were housing specific type grant, grants um, through Connecticut Housing Finance Authority and the Department of Housing and then some other nonprofit groups. Um, we were very successful with that. But again, it was an entirely different set of parameters with different demographics. Um, we were building affordable housing across the state of Connecticut. And so it was, um, that was very community dependent. I do have to say a lot of the grants that are available, unfortunately, Cheshire does not qualify for. Um, yeah. But there are, you know, like the Connecticut Communities Challenge Grant, which, you know, just a, a quick on that. So that's $100 million available um, for between $1 and $10 million um, per project grants available to any of the 169 Connecticut municipalities. But 50 percent, so 50 million of the 100 million is just for urban areas, and so there's 50 million available for the suburban communities in, in the state of Connecticut. Um, I have not received direction yet. I've had discussions with the town manager, and I'm sure that he will be having those with the town council in the next uh, few meetings or a few weeks in order to figure out what we are going to be applying for for the town of Cheshire. Um, but that comes with a 50 percent match. And so there has to be a local match. You can use some of the American Rescue Funds for that if the town council was going to um, wanting to go that way for a specific project or need within the community. So that's going to be our next big one. I submitted one. It was just a twenty seven thousand dollar grant for the trails uh, improvement to install some chicanes at the bike path. Um, a chicane is basically a set of gates and some um, 
signage and directional signage in order to um, kind of direct people to use the Hawk system um, on the, at the West Main Street crossing to try to help with some of the safety issues that the Cheshire Police have identified. I think we could all speak to at the at that crossing. Does the council have to approve your grants that you apply for? They do. Anything that is submitted on behalf of the town needs to be have town council approval. Yes, Sean, the town manager can't sign any of the grant applications without authorization from the town council. Okay. Thank you. authorized. <laughs> <laughs> there's some great, you know, there's great grants out there for open space acquisitions and for trail improvements. And you know, I've been working with the Coalition for Sustainable Cheshire. They definitely have a wonderful group of people who are very community minded and very. Um, they call me regularly <laughs> just to make sure that, you know, th but they have, and that's one of the things with this job that I, I have to say is, you know, even though I'm from Cheshire, on the Board of Education, kind of been a part of the community, I am amazed at the amount of people that are involved in the community that call me, that reach out to me, that are, that use their own, like all of you, they use their own time when they could be doing other things with their family to try to make Cheshire a better place to live. So I, I really, I really appreciated that over the past couple of months. Well, thank you, Andrew. Excellent presentation. Very informative. Uh, very knowledgeable. And I can, we can all sense your enthusiasm for your job. Thank you. I appreciate great. that. Which thank you. And you can come find me. I'm in the town manager's office at Town Hall. Okay. I mean, just now, right now, they're like ripping down walls and things. But next week, we'll be back into uh, our, our actual office. And I'll have, a, I'll have an office with a door and a, and a place where we can sit and talk. If, if you want, you could put your uh, contact information into the chat if someone wants to contact you with phone or email. Sure, and then, we'll do that right now. Okay, and we'll have it. Oop. You're... Uh, we're going to go through our usual business here. You're certainly welcome to stay or leave, depending. It sounds like you're a pretty busy guy. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to go uh, feed my daughter. I have a uh, high school freshman who's 15 that still kind of likes me, and so I'm going to see if I can feed her dinner. <laughs> Lucky you. <laughs> there you go. There's my, there's okay. my email uh, and my phone number. Well, thank you, everybody. And I'm, I'm happy to come back at any time. Just um let Beth know and I'll come I'll come back and speak okay thanks, hopefully Andrew. next time we'll all be in person so all right yes absolutely I'd rather that all right thanks everybody thank, thank you. you Andrew okay good night Bye. Bye. well that was a really good presentation thanks for suggesting it Beth um, Dawn are you with us yet I guess not um I for a little while yeah, yeah I mean, I've been oh, Harold. Yeah, I've been here, but it kept breaking up. Oh, everybody just it for kept your, saying I kept. Yeah, you're breaking up here too. Yeah, for, it said for your it kept saying that this meeting is being recorded. Pardon? It, it is being recorded. Right. We right. Okay. We couldn't but connect it, to the it live just stream. I kept getting this. Uh, um, yeah. Um, well, for the minutes, you can review the but I, thing if you have I to. got as much. Okay. Everybody is here except for Todd. Mm hmm Okay. Um, we need a motion to yep. approve the minutes from the last meeting. Can someone just make that motion? That Made by Kathy and second. Terry Seconds. Okay. Uh, vote to approve the meetings. All in favor, yeah. either say aye or raise your hand. Aye. Aye. Okay. Minutes are approved. Terry, did you want to give the treasurer's report? Um, we have $1,000 in the treasury this time. The only thing we've been paying out is for um, secretarial services. Okay. Beth, did we ever find the, the guidelines for the use of that money? Are there any? Um, well, I mean, the, what you have is, uh, I think, three hundred dollars for dues, which is your membership for ACLB and things like that, yeah. and I think two hundred dollars for professional development, which would be if you wanted to attend any conferences. So that's those are the current guidelines, other than the secretarial fees. Okay. 
So if we want to change that, that would have to go through the budget process uh, this year to change what those lines would be. So if you want to think about a different use for some of that money, let me know. Okay. I'd just rather see the library use it for something than, you know, just have it sit there. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's the money is there for the benefit of the library. So, and we haven't had that because of COVID. We haven't had an in-person ACLB conference. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for the treasurer's report, Terry. Uh, communications. I don't have any. Do you have any communications, Beth? Kathy, any communications? Okay. Okay. Report of the chair. Um, I don't have much to say again. I Since our last meeting, I've visited the library many times, um, masked, and um, taken out many books, uh, requested some in interlibrary loan. Uh, everything ran fine. I had great customer service, so that's all I can really report. Um, now we have uh, Beth's report, which will be, I'm, I'm sure, more definitive than my report. <laughs> um, so thank you, Harold. Uh, personnel news. Uh, today, we interviewed three finalists for the Senior Librarian Head of Adult Services position, and we hope to have an offer extended sometime this week. We also have received 21 applications for the Children's Librarian position, which closed on Friday. Uh, we'll be narrowing down that those submissions in um, plan possibly first interviews that first week of December after Thanksgiving. Uh, Andrew mentioned one of the programs um, that we held, but we've held three successful adult in-person programs to date. We're still waiting for the kids till after the first of the year and more kids can get vaccinated. Um, but those adult programs was a dark skies, light, light pollution program that was sponsored by the Sustainable Cheshire with 23 attending. We had Joy Saltzman, who spoke about the magic of resilience with a max capacity crowd of 35. That's our, our cap for the Mary Baldwin room. And then Lori Sanders, uh, who was the town's first environmental planner, and she spoke about the natural and cultural history of Cheshire through an ecological lens, and 25 people came to that. So we're, we're getting really good attendance at, our, at the first three in person. So um, I expect that'll continue. And then on December 8th, Harold knows this, Longtime mm -hmm. Connecticut broadcaster and prospect resident Larry Rifkin and Harold's cousin will talk about his memoir, No Dead Air, Career Reflections from the TV Executive Who Kept Barney the Dinosaur from Becoming Extinct. So I'm really excited. I'll be hosting that program and I'm really excited to, to hear that talk. Um, the cement pad uh, in the back off the parking lot has been poured for the new bench. The bench is uh, shipped this week. So hopefully those will be arriving and we can get that Wi-Fi uh, expansion project finished. And also the tables, the new tables for the teen area should be arriving. So we'll be getting those together and opening the teen area soon. The Scarecrow contest, which the library uh, was, was a partner in, ended up raising $2,421 after expenses. So $1,210.50 went to Ball and Socket and the other uh, $1,210.50 went to Cheshire Social, Social Services. And then just a reminder, um, Cheshire Library Friends Fall Books Dale starts this week. Wednesday is preview night. If you join the friends um, on that night, you can come to preview night. I believe it actually starts a little earlier this year at four o'clock. And then that'll continue through November 21st. So right through the weekend, um, including Sunday, we're gonna open special just to keep the book sale, give them one more day. Um, so they've already got most of it set up. It looks looking really good. It's going to include um, having things up in the loft so we could spread people out a little bit more easily uh, with COVID. And um, I think, you know, people are going to be excited to, to come back for that. So hope we'll see you there. Okay. Are any of those programs that you're doing in person also on Zoom or are they strictly in person with the 35 person limit? Those three were strictly in person, but we are going to be doing some hybrid programs. Uh, I can't remember specifically which ones we're, we're trying to do that with, but um, I know Jared's going to be helping um, in particular uh, our programmers with having both the ability, if a speaker is Zooming in, to also have a live audience that's watching that Zoom so that we could have both for people who wanted to be in person. Um, 
versus people who maybe still want to come from home or to be able to increase capacity by having the ability to have more people watch it. Um, hmm. this, just out of curiosity, is this, do you know if the town has a master Zoom contract? We, I don't, I know the town has their own Zoom account. We have four um, that we purchased for the library for doing the programs. Um, and we upgraded one of them um, just recently so that it's going to be more of the webinar format. I don't know if any mm -hmm. of you have done a Zoom webinar. It looks a lot cleaner. You don't see all of the little boxes with all of the attendees. One of the um, reasons that I wanted the webinar format is because we're going to be partnering with Hartford Healthcare um, probably after the first of the year to start doing um, a series of health related topics that their doctors zoom in and do uh, talk about men's health or breast health or you know, um, high blood pressure, any any of these uh, topics. Mm -hmm. And we'll do it as a um, noon time. That's the best time for the doctor. They have a break, I guess, at that point and can be available. And um, what's been nice about it, according to Harvard Healthcare, they've done it with the North Haven Library. The webinar format allows for some anonymity among the attendees. And we've tried to do these in person, but it's harder to get people to come out and talk about sensitive health issues with their neighbors in the room. Maybe mm -hmm. they don't want to ask a question or they don't want people to know that they're struggling with something or, or investigating a diagnosis. So they have found that they've actually had really good attendance. And through the webinar format, you can ask questions directly of the panelists without anybody seeing who's asking the question. So you can type it in and then they can just answer it gen generally. So it's you can kind of keep your privacy. So we're excited to start doing that. Um, Probably after the first of the year, we'll get a, a slate going and have those. Well, that sounds great. Yeah, I, I think the webinar format is better for events like that, for sure. Yeah, we're um, still figuring it out, but we'll get there. I think everybody is still figuring it out. <laughs> you know, sure. we have a Zoom room at Temple Beth David that we installed. Oh, wow. Which um, runs totally remote from a little iPad, you can adjust the cameras and the audio and everything, but that's a different circumstance. Then people don't wanna be anonymous there. You wanna right. see the other people. So I think everybody um, is trying to figure out where it's where it's going, you know, if it's gonna be Zoom, hybrid, in-person combination, how it's gonna work. I don't think anybody has the perfect answer yet. And luckily the technology allows us to tailor our situation to our audience and our presenters. Yep. Okay. Um, any unfinished business? I guess we still have the issue of we're down a member. Um, so yeah, I think the town council is supposed to address this. They said after the election, um, that's Mark Hostage's seat has never been filled. Right, and it's it's been. Um certainly on our radar um could you speak a little closer to the microphone please yeah it's been on, it's been on our radar i think i'm not try, i'm trying to remember if it's coming up i don't believe it's coming up to council tomorrow evening but it's yeah. in action stages and the, the difficulty with any group is, is republicans or democrats is that the membership of the whole town committee has to vote on the potential people mm -hmm sometimes difficult to get members in the same room even if yes right? so and it's also difficult and this would be a time to to have a commercial for all of you and anybody who's watching if they are um to understand that we need volunteers we want we're always looking for volunteers and frankly we get frustrated when the answers when we find a good candidate are i don't have time well, this library board is an important board. Look at all the wonderful things you're doing in the library. Um, as a citizen, I think it's important to be able to give a little of your time. So find a passionate subject, whether it's library or park and rec or, or the public safety commissioner, any one of those, and speak to anyone on the town council. Um, there are ways to get people nominated that don't go through the committee process. However, we prefer to make sure that it goes through the committee process to be fair to all of the people who are involved and make sure that we're vetting the right people. Because once you sign up, you need to be there and committed to attending the meetings. If we don't have quorums, then the committee can't accomplish anything. So um, I urge anybody who's watching to do that. Any of you are here 
um, please go out and ask your friends if they'd be willing to serve on these boards. It can be very interesting and you learn lots of interesting things. You meet lots of interesting people and you're doing a good service for the town. So yes, we're aware that that seat is, a, is, is in need of being filled and our nominating chairman is on it. That's about the best I can give you as a yep. chairman. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. No, you're right that both parties struggle to yeah. find volunteers. It just is very difficult. And uh, Harold, you and I are of an age that's over 21. And so our, <laughs> age, our age group was taught that volunteering and giving back was a primary responsibility for ourselves in some capacity, it, whatever we chose. Unfortunately, sometimes lives are very busy for the younger people with far more demands on their time with their kids and with school and with two jobs and all of that. It does make it more difficult, but all volunteer groups are struggling. I remember when there were the JCs and the junior women's and the neighborhood uh, newcomers that all had 50, 60, 75 members that came and all participated and did uh, projects and built parks and and did that and it's very difficult to find that commitment today so yeah. we have to be good um, role models here and encourage the younger people okay um beth you have an item for new business art yes, selection so committee talking speaking of volunteers <laughs> yes, so actually this is um, something new that I wanted to make the board aware of and um, we'll be talking about it next month as well because um, it will affect our current art exhibit policy, not in a great way, but some tweaks need to be made. So I need to um, adjust the policy and then I'll bring it to you for approval um, next month and I'll send that out ahead of time. But basically, um, you know, I think you're all aware that we have art exhibits in the Mary Baldwin room. And then when we did the renovation, we installed um, this wire metal framing right in the main entrance. And that's also meant to hang artwork. So the way that this has worked traditionally is that we kind of ask, we kind of wait for the artists to come to us. We may know some, we have, we definitely have, you know, our, our in-house uh, like the Cheshire Art League and people like that who regularly show, but then there are months where we don't have anybody. And so, my deputy director, Deb Rutter, who many of you know, um, had been looking around at what other libraries do. And a lot of libraries will have a committee that actually solicits and then vets, almost like a jury art show, but not quite that formal, but vets the artwork and picks uh, different art shows and does the scheduling and takes care of all the logistics. Well, we have a great uh, situation with the library because we also oversee Arts Place. So I also attend the Cheshire Performing Fine Arts board meetings and have gotten to know that group quite well. And they're all wonderful and talk about amazing volunteers. Um, and so Deb reached out to them and there are, I think three or four volunteers from that group and along with Deb and Joanne Plarczyk who will now be responsible for taking in solicitations from artists. So artists will be able to come to our website. They'll be able to, through a form, email us pictures of their artwork and ask to be considered to show. And there are different guidelines that will allow um, for more of a variety of people to show. So you'll be able to show, you know, once every three years or so, or you can be part of a bigger show and show a little more often. So if the Cheshire Art League shows, um, you know, and then an individual artist from that wants to show, they'll be able to do that. But we're also hoping to have some specialized shows once a year, such as a high school art exhibit um, or a show of art done by people with disabilities or special needs. And to just kind of have a broader range and reach of, of artists than just, you know, waiting for people to come to us and tell us they'd like to, to show their artwork. And also to ensure that there's artwork up all of the time so that the walls look nice, the meeting room looks nice. Um, I feel that art is, a form of visual information and that people get a lot out of that. So it fits our mission with providing people with information, but just in a visual art form. And it gives people, many of whom may not otherwise have the opportunity to display their art, um, a forum for doing that. So the goal of the committee is to, um, you know, make sure that we have given, are giving enough people the opportunity to do so. And also that 
they'll help vet um, the quality and the appropriateness of the artwork. It doesn't have to be high fine art every time. You know, we're not talking about a, a real juried show in that way. Um, we'd like to see things from from all different um, types of artists. So we're just trying to make that a little bit more organized and formal. And it'll help take some of the burden off the um, administrative staff from having to manage the pieces as much. So I just wanted to make you aware of that change and how we've been doing it. And then to let you know that in the policy, um, there's just gonna have to be some wording changes that go along with the new procedures. So that group, I think is just about finished with their guidelines. And then I'll take that and, and adjust the policy and bring that to you next month. Okay. Are, are the, you going to allow people to put prices on the work? That's a good question. No, we don't do that. But what we do is we allow a um, we allow an artist to provide a price list, which is kept at the circulation desk. So okay. if somebody is interested in purchasing um, a piece, if it's for sale, um, then they do that privately with the artist so they can get the price list and the artist contact information and then they broker that deal outside of the library. Oh, do you get a brokerage a, fee? No. <laughs> Um, it, it, I mean, it's not a, a silly question in that when I was the director of the Madison Library as uh, a nonprofit who had to raise funds, we did take a percentage of the art sales, um, but we don't do that as a municipal library here in Chester. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, are there any other business come before the meeting, before we adjourn? I'd like, to, I'd like to mention something. I know it's been mentioned before, but now that everybody's shopping, you know, for Christmas and people are shopping a lot on Amazon. Uh, you know, the friends of the library, if you sign up uh, Smiles on Amazon, everything you purchase, they give a donation for the Cheshire Public Library. We've been doing that for a few years and you'd be surprised. I mean, they don't give a lot, but it, it adds up and the more people you get, um, they would get more money. So I don't think it's that complicated to sign up. My husband did the signing up, so I'm not sure I'm not gonna say that because I don't know he did the signing up, but uh, it adds up. And they tell you every once in a while, you know, how much has been donated to the library. So you might think about that because everybody seems to shop on Amazon, especially now. Okay. Thank you, Terry. Anybody else have anything to like to bring up before we adjourn? Okay, well, thanks for being here and uh, the chair will entertain a motion for adjournment. Someone has to move that we adjourn. So okay. moved. Okay, <laughs> Kathy moves. <laughs> Terry Happy seconds. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Okay. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Meeting, meeting, I don't have a gavel, but uh, meeting <laughs> is hereby adjourned. Stop recording now. <laughs>